To many people, a driving licence is a right. It's not, it's a privilege. An awful lot of motorists on the road shouldn't even have a radio licence, let alone a driving licence. We had a female driver going along the M62, filling in a crossword puzzle as she drove. She was stopped, it was a young woman of about 23 years of age. She travelled from Manchester to London two or three times a week and was so bored with the journey that she took to fill in a crossword puzzle as a way of relieving the monotony. She advanced from doing word crosswords to numerical ones. And because she wasn't very good at sums, she actually had a calculator strapped to her left thigh. I often wonder what would have happened when we tried explaining that to a coroner's court. Technological improvements have made cars much safer. Seat belts, airbags, better steering, better suspension. 100 miles an hour is nothing to the normal vehicle. The only thing that hasn't changed is that, the human brain. That stood still two million years ago. Dartmouth to Park, out of city, Park Lane Lane 1, OK? Mm -hmm. like what was the problem with Gordon? Yeah. Yeah. Have you looked at camera 5 to 8 at all? Like Alpha Oscar Tango 7, over. Do you know if he's collected? Yeah, seven. Yes, can I have an update, please, on the RTO? Not a vehicle involved, not injury. One foot right central barrier damage, can't look for. Yeah, Market post, 27 of these four. Yes, Roger 7, thank you, Mike. Okay, he's confident the way he's yes. walking, going through. Well, I don't know. Uh, Where's he walking? God knows. Come for a stroll, man. Yeah, I've got that on tape just in case. Look, oh, he's going to walk across the carriage right now. Totally stupid. Man. Obviously, he's coming out of the motorway phone. I'll tell the girls if he comes on the phone, go back and wait. Yes, Roger 3. A peak amount of traffic is about 150,000 vehicles an hour, um, and it was designed for about 70,000 vehicles an hour. Obviously, you know, it's uh, at certain times of the day, virtually every day, we do get the congestion. There's nothing we can do about it. It's just a matter of um, trying to manage the traffic. Thank you, my With the amount of vehicles travel through the area in a day, you've only got to get the bad driver. Uh, then, then you know it turns in. It can turn into carnage. You've got the Lord Mayor of somewhere driving in lane two and sitting on his bumper by about six foot is a rather large lorry who's obviously frustrated at doing uh, 50 miles an hour. Now, could you fit a car in that gap there? Let alone 20 cars. And that's a lorry with a, uh, could have a gross weight of 32 tonnes. I like it in this lane. This is a good lane to be in. Look at it here. I mean, his, his vision here, this guy in the hay truck, his vision 
is, is probably as far as the back of that truck in front. He's got absolutely no idea what's going to happen further on around the corner or further on up the road. If anything comes off another vehicle or a vehicle suddenly swerves, within a split second you're going to have three lorries into the back of each other. first got me in car. He's here to drive places just for the sake of just driving, you know, you know get him in car and go to the shops, just, you know, really just for something to keep you occupied, to keep you busy. Uh, he seemed to, he seemed to try and find excuses to go and actually drive in your car. on sharp so I put my brakes on sharp and then uh, I thought to look in my mirror see what was happening behind I looked through my mirror and saw a lorry heading towards fairly fast and watching it in my mirror I could tell that they weren't going to be able to stop so I just put my head down and waited for it to crash into me. left in car was what me and Mark were where we were sitting. There was no there was no room for anything else. If there'd been anybody else in back our injuries would have been a lot worse. They'd have probably been killed. Changing your views on life, thinking that that we might have been killed. I've got a daughter now that wouldn't have been here. And uh, to think about that I might have never seen my wife again and my children like might have uh, you know, it brings brings a lot of emotions out to you. You can't you can't describe the feelings you get thinking that you might never see your family again.
Yes, let me check. Yeah, I'll blast for that. Left again. Turn the engine off, please, and step out. Just step out. So I don't want to stick my head through the window, because I get my bum knocked off. Pardon? I don't want to stick my head through the window. No. Any, any idea why I've stopped you? Yeah. Why? Well, I was speeding. OK, any idea how long I've been behind you? Yeah, since, um Gravelly Hill. Gravelly Hill. So did you know it was a police vehicle, or did you know we were police? Yeah, I got, got an idea you were a police vehicle, yeah. So why have you continued to speed? Well, I wanted to get home. I've got a few marriage problems, and I wanted to get home against Lord yet. I've been a bit of a prat, that's it. OK. A bit of a burk with my marriage. I've been married 32 years. I could have f***ed up a bit. OK. Well, I mean, is that the way you normally drive? No, no. What, have you got any points on your licence? Uh, yes, I've got three. What's that for? Speeding. Involving an ambulance and a car. The ambulance is carrying a patient with a code 4C Charlie. I believe the driver of the car may have injuries. If you could attend time 1510, Park 38 received ever. Just to show you that we're all not perfect, I suppose. Hi, Sue. What's the um, The ambulance is travelling in that direction on an emergency case. The black metro there, which is travelling in front of the ambulance, has turned right and has obviously collided with the front near side of the ambulance. Look, patiently, the guy's had a heart attack. And the jolt of the accident has actually helped him and revived the, the, heart, uh, the heart attack, picked uh, him a little bit and brought him back to life, as it were, just at the moment of impact. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> So there we are. It just goes to show you. It just goes to show you how uh, the good little <laughs> saves all. Uh, and it gets rid of a bit of metal at the same time. And we're just going to check on the condition of the, of the people involved and then uh, if it's OK, we'll clear the scene. We've got a recovery truck coming for the ambulance. Uh, sort of the metro is quite badly damaged. So it's not quite sure what's happened at the moment in respect of how the cars are called, the ambulance has come together, other than the fact that he was obviously on the way for a blue light job in view of his casualty in the back of the car. The back of the ambulance, rather. <laughs>